Hey, what is up, guys? This is Ivan from GetIvan.com, and I'd like to welcome you to a special video on ShotCut and how to use ShotCut and Inkscape and some other resources online to create videos only using images and stock audio. So you can do this for free. It just takes you probably uh, 15 minutes or so, maybe maybe less, maybe a little bit more, depending on you know where you're, you know getting how long it takes you to get through this video uh, to get this done. And the first time you after you do it the first time, it just gets you just get faster faster with it. So let's dive in. So we're in shortcut right now. In order for us to begin making our our little five second or ten second video or whatever, we need to have some materials to work with. So we need to go into Inkscape first and foremost. So once you've opened Inkscape, you got a new template going. You're going to want to click File Document Properties and set the width to 1920 make sure the units are in pixels so px set the width to 19, 1920 and the height to 1080 so that's hd uh, dimensions there <clears throat> excuse me it'll look like this once you once you hit enter in those two boxes you can close that you can close that window by hitting the x in the upper right there not here <laughs> in document properties okay so boom. All right, so we need to make a background. Select the square tool over here. And then select the color that you want for this example. Let's do this orange. And hold shift and control if you're on a Mac. Figure figure that out. It could be it could be Apple key, it could be control, I'm not sure. Um, and then drag that rectangle out. Make sure you click the cursor icon here. Make sure your opacity is up to 100% on the color. And uh, and actually, let's let's change this orange to something a little softer. Let's change it to this color orange. See, not quite as hardcore as that version there. Let's do this orange, and then let's make make the aspect 1920 width up here double when you have this rectangle selected and then the height 10 80 enter make sure this is set to pixels again if it's not set to pixels it won't look right then come over here to align and distribute click that tab if you can't see it go to object and then click align and distribute make sure it's set to uh, set on relative to page, okay, with your square selected or your rectangle selected, you're going to click center on horizontal axis, center on vertical axis, and bam, you've got our background centered onto our canvas there. All right, so now we've got our canvas, uh, and we are going to need uh, some text and an image. So let's do the text first. This ad will be on an advanced shovel, shovel that automatically digs a hole for you. Okay, it's just totally made up. All right. I'm going to hold shift and control and drop down this box here. I'm going to just type in some random characters just to get started. I'm going to control, hit control A to select that whole area. And then I'm going to do my drop down and I'm going to select my font. Normally, I would probably select Oswald because that's a pretty good display or advertising font. You can download it. It's a commercial free font. You can download it for free on something like Font Squirrel, 1001 Fonts, you know, etc. Um, also, fonts. Font. Excuse me. Font.google.com, I believe. I'm gonna. Uh, for now, though, well, let's go ahead and select Impact. I think it's a free one that's native. And let's type in um, advanced. This happens all the time. Glitches with this. As soon as you start typing, it gives you problems. So, all right. Add advanced shovel uh, automatic 
digging. And I'll do the price on the next line in another box. So let's click our cursor there to select that whole thing. And then let's go ahead and expand it so that we can see it. Let's double click back in there, select uh, select all con with control A. Let's uh, center our text up here in our box. Why is that so large? Let's move this in here so that it's more manageable. Um, and let's go ahead and do this uh, this top to bottom thing here. Select this drop down and do uh, PX, PX. Let's go ahead and lower this until it stops going down. I think it's at about 100 or so. So our text is more compact up and down. I'm also going to change the color to 70% gray. No, let's do white. Yeah, let's do let's do pure white there. I also want to do it line for line. So let's go in here and put shovel below advanced, automatic digging below that area. And I'm also going to clone this box here by selecting the box with my cursor and then clicking um, control D. So then I'm going to move my clone down here, double click, select all control A, and then I'm going to put $99. Just get my cursor out and oops. And I'm going to uh, move my 99 over here and mess with it in a second. So with my advanced shovel here, I'm going to center this. Let's see. Center it horizontally. No, no, no. Let's move it up here. It's kind of hard. See, it's kind of hard to tell right now where we can operate because we're, what I usually, usually like to do is you can kind of eyeball it. But you can also split your square in half if you want to be really pre precise. Okay, so an easy way to do that is to clone your, your rectangle here. So select your rectangle, then do Control D. And of course, it's on the top layer now, so it's covering everything up. Then make it some sort of highly contrasting color like lime green. And then drop the opacity to 50%-ish. And you can actually cut the width in half. This is 960. Enter. And then, bam, now you have a guideline wherein you can kind of see where half of your rectangle is. Um, you can also create a sliver sort of divider with another rectangle if you, if you wanted to keep a white divider between your image and your text. But, you know, you can do that. But... Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like this. And, and by the way, once you get this template made, you, you never have to do this over again. You can just go into the same template for, you know, as many ads as you want, dozens and dozens of ads and change the details, you know, for a new ad. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, let's see here. It might even be beneficial to have this other background uh, object, depending on the way you're doing things. For the way I'm doing things, I'm going to actually have it separated into two, into two different squares so that I can have my text centered into the, into the right square. So let's go ahead and make this, this square 960 width. Okay. And then we're going to have the the uh, align and distribute here and we're going to have it on align the right sides going to click that and so bam we have our square on the right side so then i'm going to click my advanced shovel automatic digging and i'm going to shift click i'm going to hold shift and click on my orange square there and i'm going to click relative to two and then last selected here and then i'm going to click center on vertical axis so now that text is centered onto that orange square. So now I have a little bit of understanding and how much bigger I can make it, I guess. So I'm gonna make this quite a bit bigger, advanced shovel, automatic digging. And I'm actually, I'm probably gonna leave that 99 out there in the nether and just hit enter here and 
looked weird. Hold on. Okay. It's just a glitch. And then put 99 here. $99. Um, so let's go ahead and make this encompass that whole area. And then we'll add some contrast. So let's. I'm going to select my text box and then the square here. And then center horizontal, center, center vertically. So now it's looking good. In terms of design, you know, you can play around with this for, you know, an hour or more, but if you wanted to, but it, it's, it's convenient to do something that is contrasting to, you know, something generic, something contrasting, something generic. So I might do automatic digging red, for example. Mm, that's ugly. What's a color that would be maybe gold. I have no idea what is complementary to orange necessarily. You could look that up online or you could just sit around playing with it. I want to say something in the blue spectrum so we could try. Oh, that's shoot. That is ugly as can be. Maybe even uh another neutral color like 80 percent gray might be okay advanced shovel maybe that's a little too hardcore let's do 70 percent gray maybe that's a little softer advanced shovel automatic digging 99 dollars. so it's not perfect but let's just go with it for the sake of time and over here let's select our other 99 that we left in the stranded and delete it you can select it by if you select around a whole object and it'll you won't be able to get what you need to get. Um, then go then we're going to go to the Internet somewhere and find a picture of a shovel. And a good place to go is Pixabay. And there's a number of places. Pixabay is a pretty good go to place. You can go to other places if you want higher quality stuff like you can go to Envato Marketplace, for example, or Stockphoto.com or whatever. And for this example, we're going to type in shovel. And I already kind of looked at these in a, a little bit earlier in a previous take where I had some technical difficulties. And um, I picked, I mean, that's a pretty good picture right there, actually. Let's go ahead and do that picture. That's a little different from the one that I picked earlier. I don't even see the one that I picked earlier. That's a interesting one there. So you're going to go download free. All of these are commercial free on this site. And then just pick the smallest image usually. And save it wherever you want to save it. I'm going to go ahead and save it there replace that you can go to tinypng.com and uh, condense the size compress the size of your images if you want I don't think it's super necessary since the video is not going to be that large anyways so then we're going to go back to Inkscape and click file import and then find our image there it is Click OK. You don't need to mess with that. And then um, center it over here somewhere. And let's see here. Let's select the uh, the green square here. And then make sure it's relative to last selected. Center that up, vertical and horizontal. And then we can make sure that it's encompassing a rather large section of your picture. This right here isn't a photo. In, in, in other cases, I'd have the photo encompassing the entire half of this section, and you can have it snap to, you know, this square, and you can you can turn snapping on over here in the sidebar so that it snaps to certain objects. But since this is a, a an icon, we're going to want to make sure that our whole uh, 
image is um, this orange background color. So we're going to want to select this green square. If you want to use this in your template later, you can just come over here and have the fill turned turned off to no paint. Or you can uh, click down here to none. So now it's it's invisible. It won't show up in the in the picture. And we're going to come back to this little square here. And you can you can probably drag this, but I'm just going to go ahead and click up here and click and enter in 19 by 1920, and then uh, center it to the page, and bam. So that's not the prettiest because some of the colors are a little unusual. Um, something you can do to improve the appearance is to add a divider like I was talking about. So in that case, I'd select my square, uh, make sure that it is, I'll actually have it black at first and then I'll probably change it to white and then hold shift. And then you can create your little sliver there. Come up here to your, your pointer and then change the height to 1080, which is the height of that um, rectangle. And then have it horizontally and vertically centered onto the page. And bam, you kind of got a divider. That one's a little bit gray. Let's turn it white. And it looks like that might not be on top. So if, if something's wrong with the colors, it doesn't seem like it's on the right layer, you can select an object and come over here. You can come to layers or, or uh, on the side over here, layers or you can and mess with it or you can come to object and then raise it and lower it on that area. I'm just going to click this shortcut to raise the selection to the top. And it looks like it was already let's raise it to the, to the bottom. Yeah, okay. So it was already at the top. It's just not very Oh, it's not very white because of the opacity over here from when we made a square earlier. So I'm going to Turn the opacity to 100%. There we go. And you might even desire a lighter color like that. I would probably do, you maybe try 5% gray. It's a little bit different. Maybe even a different orange hue, like a lighter orange, like, like this version here. Yeah. That's, uh, I think that might even be better. So a, a lighter orange there to give it some contrast so really simple you know yeah I, it sounded it may, it may sound a little complicated a lot of ranting there but that's just because i'm going through these things step by step really essentially you're setting up a background you're putting some text on the page and you're putting an image on one side of the page pretty simple then you save that template and you can come in here and you can change the color change the text and you can use this for anything you want so anyways let's export this let's go to uh you, you can go to file and export PNG or on the sidebar here, I like to do export. Make sure that it's set to page, otherwise it won't export properly and you'll be, you know, uh, tortured as to why that it's not happening. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and call it advanced shovel automatic digging, save, and then click export. And it'll, in this case, it'll ask me if I wanna replace, I wanna replace it in my case. So it'll export it to the, that folder. So all done there. Let's go to uh, Shotcut now and let's import that image. So open file, open that image. Actually, I want to, let me delete this uh, real quick while I'm looking here. And once that's imported, you just drag it down here into the time bar here. and uh this timeline here and um there there should be a way in properties to change the duration here but for some reason i've had a lot of trouble getting it to work consistently i'm not really sure why so whenever i want to change the duration of something i just i just drag it like this and you can see here that this is 12 seconds this is eight seconds and so it's probably a good idea to have something in around 10 seconds or five seconds. It just depends on whatever you're doing it for. 
Um, and then now you need some kind of a piece of music just to give it some color. Um, so that's when I would go to, you know, I, I don't really have a lot of free sources for this. So there, the paid sources would be some places like pond5.com or Envato, the Envato marketplace for stock music or whatever, but it, it's kind of expensive. You know, it's not like you need to spend five or 20 bucks on a piece of music for some rinkity dinkity ad, you know, so you might want to look out there for commercial free uh, music, uh, samples or whatever. Um, the one place that I know of is YouTube. If you go to YouTube and then you go up, if you click up here on your profile thing, uh, there's a button that says creator studio, I believe. And on the sidebar here, you can click this create button. And it'll, it'll take you to an audio library and you can, you can sort them by attribution uh, and click on attribution not required. And then you can sort by different moods, genres, instruments, all these kinds of different things. So I'm not really interested in um, clicking play on this because I don't want it to be too loud. Uh, Let's go ahead and sort by duration, though. Let's do less than 30 seconds. Uh, and let's take a, take a look at this reggae. I'm going to, if it's too loud, I apologize. Watch your volume real quick. Okay. That, that was enough for me to know, get, get an idea so uh, of what to expect. So... Um, you're free to use this song in any of your videos. I'm going to download this reggae song in Bomber's thing. I'm going to save it to that folder. And then I'm going to open a uh, shortcut here. And I'm going to open another file. I'm going to open that Bomber's thing file. Oh, sorry about that. Autoplay there. I'm going to drag this down here. Well, that's not what I wanted. Let's undo that. Let's add a um, uh, a track to the timeline. Jeez. Oh, I add a track here. Add audio track. Here we go. So I right clicked and I clicked add audio track. So oh, is there a space there? There we go. Um, so let's go back to the beginning and let's try that again. Let's, um, there should, there should be a little library here somewhere. I don't remember how to access it. If so, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and open it again. Bomber sting. Sorry. And I'm going to drag it here to this section. So I should be able to cut this. Ah, should be able to cut the song short if I want to. Um, but I might want to extend the length of this image. So I'm going to drag this image to the end here. I'm just going to drag it there. That's close enough. And um, let's see here. Is there a way for me to just turn this volume let me turn it off. Uh, let me just turn it real low and see if it's working properly. Bear with me. So yeah, when you hit play, you should see something like this. Pretty simple, right? I'm gonna go ahead and return the volume to normal. And, uh, geez. When you're ready to export, just click export. And then 
uh, it should be already on the correct settings. You shouldn't need to mess with it. Format should be MP4 uh, or something like that. It may not be default because I've you know obviously messed with this program before. So you might want to set MP4 MP4 format. Make sure that it's 1920 by 1080 resolution and. You know, you can call, come back and look at this video and see if it's similar to these settings here. I think these are these should be default though. Anyway, so you just click export file, and then you find a um, a location. Name your location, or name your uh, file. So I'm gonna call this Advanced Shovel Automatic Digging. Save file type, it shouldn't, it's already MP4, and then click save. And over here on the right, you'll see a jobs tab that'll that'll tell you, you know, what's going on there. And as you can see, we're almost halfway through here. So it's, it's pretty fast. And if it's taken, I think it's normally even faster than that. I just have so many programs and tabs and, and I'm actually recording a video right now. So it's a probably a little slower than it normally would be, but um, it's already done. So there, were, oh, looks like thirty seconds. Something may have gone wrong. So let's go check our our uh, file here. Nope, looks like thirteen. That video is thirteen seconds. So. I don't know why it says 30 seconds. Tempted to test it, but I don't want to. Watch your volume real quick. Let me open this up. Yeah, it looks good. So it's 13 seconds, advanced shovel, automatic digging, $99. So. Is it the most amazing video in the world? <laughs> no, it's it's just a simple, you know, image with a little bit of music. And it's really easy to do. Anybody can do that. Anybody can go and make a picture and drop it in to, you know, your video editing program, make a quick video. You know, and, and you can, you know, something I've done is I've left this template open here. Uh, and... Uh, this uh, not template. I've left this uh, environment open, and I've simply come in and deleted the picture, and uh, brought in another image. Like I, I've had sessions where I've spent time, you know, and made like thirty images, and just sit here and drop them in, and make you know a bunch of different videos, little videos that have different variations you know, for, for split testing types of purposes for, uh, ad advertising purposes, or you could, you could even do it as a sort of a video spinning type of method. If you wanted to, if you wanted to make sure that every video actually had a substantial difference and in, in its uh, substance. So, um, anyways, now that you've got your video, video there you basically just go over to youtube and click this upload button if you're going to be uploading to youtube or wherever and you're pretty much done then you can kind of do some other things involved with you know uh whatever's involved with that with video tags adding tags to your video you know adding links to the description and you know all that stuff so anyways that's pretty much it, guys. I appreciate you watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you got something from this video, and I'll catch you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.